All right, hello, good afternoon, and welcome to P-Town Fresh, the Sunday edition. Today is Sunday, uh, June the 19th. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Welcome. And uh, let me just check, make sure we're good on Facebook today. Uh, let's see, make sure we're good here. All right, and we're good, perfect. Welcome, Chris Alvarez and Noble T. Mackell. Welcome. And let's make sure we get the volume down. All right, good. And so, uh, if you've never joined us before, P-Town Fresh is a unique opportunity where we connect with God and we utilize technology. And we have a great time. I'll ask questions. You can ask questions and commentary. And, you know, it's, it's all good. Uh, if you are checking us out on Facebook, we ask you to do me a favor, press that share button, share it on your page, tag somebody, uh, so they also can benefit in it. And with that in, um, in mind, let's get started with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless your name. We thank you for this wonderful day you've given us, God. We thank you for everybody that's here present with us, God, and those who are watching online virtually. And Father, we thank you for this day that we celebrate Father's. I pray that today's message, Lord God, will be an encouragement to many, Lord God, uh, whether they have their father with them or not, if he's gone. And Father, for those who have issues with their fathers, I pray that they'll also be encouraged. Yes. So Father, we thank you and give you glory. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, we bless you. Amen. 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 All right. So thank you all in advance for all the wonderful Happy Father's Day wishes. And... um. I'm going to make sure we get into this thing today. Uh, let's make sure that we're still good here. All right, good. All right, so um, our question of the day today is how have you observed your father or other fathers sacrificing for you or others? <clears throat> and so first off, I have a couple of responses on Facebook that I'm going to read. Um Let's see, we have, um, okay. hmm? the, no, the plastic. Yeah. So let's see, Kelly Kell said, my father worked multiple jobs to put me through college, mm -hmm. so I would come out with zero debt. He did that for all three of his children. All right. Amen, that's what's up. Lenzel Walker said, my dad came into my life and got me. And took me to Arkansas to live with him and my grandparents when I needed him most of my life. Back in 1982. But sadly, that same year, he was killed in a trucking accident. But to this day, he remains my hero. He was there when I needed him most. Happy Father's Day to all the dads and uncles and fill-in dads. Happy Father's Day. Uh, Happy Heavenly Father's Day, Dad. You rock. Corey Gall said every single day. Also, shout out to Corey Goss. We're looking forward to coming up that way for uh, Domination this uh, Friday. Um, let's see. Mark Hayes says, uh, praying. And Chris Alvarez said, my father left his place of birth to give his family the opportunity to be free and prosper. Amen. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you for that. And also, I want to share something else. Um, I saw something on Facebook today that was very... Uh, encouraging and as far as even in line with this same question of the day so uh, let's go ahead and see if I can find that right here all right here we go listen to this this is from uh, Rasul Barry okay if you haven't he's uh, one of my friends on Facebook great brother I had a chance to meet him and all and he also um, if you know the daily bread he does the uh, he, they now have an african-american series in the Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he has, uh, they even have a Juneteenth uh, Daily Bread edition. But um, one of the things he said is one of the most powerful stories I've ever heard about fatherhood was told to me filming Juneteenth, Faith and Freedom. Jack Yates was freed in Virginia by the Emancipation Proclamation in 19, pardon me, in 1863. But the enslaver of his wife and 10 children moved to Texas to avoid freeing them. So Jack Yates allowed himself to be enslaved again to take care of his wife and children. 
Wow. That's deep. That is deep. He was emancipated again on Juneteenth and became the founder of Freedman's Town in what is now the Fourth Ward, Houston. What a father. His great-granddaughter and great-great-granddaughter told me the story in the film, which is on YouTube, and the link is on that, my, his Facebook page. We'll maybe see if we can uh, post that to the P-Town Fresh page as well. Um, so, that, that was also a very deep, uh, d very deep uh, sharing. So, uh, anyone else? How have you observed your father or other fathers sacrificing for you or others? John? Um, my dad adopted me uh, when I was five years old. Um, it was kind of a funny story how we met my mom because I was kind of a problem child that caused that relationship to get together to begin with. But uh, he eventually uh, adopted me and the funny thing is, is that he stood by my mom through the thick and the thin. My mom um, had a mental illness and um, she had multiple personality disorder that she didn't recognize until she was uh, in her 40s. And um, he still stood by her through all of that stuff that went along with it. it a lot of baggage and um, help teach me how to stand by a woman no matter what you're going through, you know, and, and how to be, you know, open to uh, adoption. I, I actually adopted my daughter, you know, when I got married as well because I, I wanted to do the same thing that he had done for me. So, you know, he was able to pass along a lot of his morality to me, and I look up to him for that. Um, he's still alive, um, you know, and the funny thing is, is that after he, after mom passed away in 1998, he's still single to this day and wants nothing to do with another girlfriend or another wife or another woman, and that speaks volumes all by itself, you know, I mean. So. Amen. Yep, he's my hero. All right, amen. Anyone else? Long-winded, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Pastor, I'm sorry. I just got on. I didn't know what the question was. Yes, sir. The question is, how have you observed your father or other fathers sacrificing for you or others? Um, well, my father, he, he gave up a lot. Um, he was a, um, a boat builder and, um, a master craftsman and, um, he could have, uh, had opportunity, um, to move away, to go to Florida, to work for a company called Bertram. And, um, my mother, uh, she couldn't leave because of her mother. She needed to stay, be here to take care of her mother. And um, my father gave up that. That was his actually dream to 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 be able to do that type of uh, that job. Not only the martial arts, but that job. And he just he he gave up everything to to help my mother with her mother and to stay in the area. And um, you know, ultimately, God left him for it. And um, he just that uh, what he did to sacrifice for his kids. I mean, just. Um, working two jobs to make the ends meet and um, you know being in there for us when he really left a lot of them. I've had friends that fathers you know not only abandoned the um, relationship with the, the wife but just abandoned the relationship with the kids totally mm. and um, you know he could have he could have done that but he didn't and um, and uh, he just he just a, was a great person. I mean, overall, and, and just thought more of others than he did sometimes of himself. So I'm just thankful to have someone like him in my life. Amen. Amen. That's what's up. And shout out to my bro, Reggie Dillard, uh, my other uh, big brother <laughs> down there in uh, Carolina. Um, my wife said, my daddy worked hard to put us through Christian schools, first through 12th grade. He was at every recital, track meet, 
band performance, graduation, etc. And he's still there for me and my family and everyone else who needs him. Love you, Daddy. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. And one more before we move on. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. All right. Let's roll. So, um, that leads us on to today's lesson. So, recently we've been studying in the book of 1 John chapter 3. And today's, of course, going to be no different. You know me. You know, holidays, we still continue on. But uh, let's just see what God speaks to us today. So, let's go ahead and begin reading first off um, <clears throat> from uh, 1 John chapter 3, beginning in verse 13 for context. Okay. Do not marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we've passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him. How does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we're of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. So the first thing, um, last time we talked about real love versus the world's love. We also mentioned how the world is expected to hate us because of our upright walk before God. And we also mentioned that we shouldn't hold grudges mm -hmm. against our brother or sister and also to be careful of what words we say or even how we think about them. But now let's take a look at verse 16. He says, by this we know love because he laid down his life for us. Mm -hmm. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So, Here's a question. A lot of people say the words, I love you. But how do you really know and discern love? By their actions. Okay, by their actions. Okay. Still being there through trials and tribulations. It says still being there through trials and tribulations. Okay. Amen. John? Well, I know that um, there are love languages where some perceive love to be one way, you know, according to the way that each individual receives it and translates it to be love. Mm -hmm. But as far as what can determine what is actually love from what's not is something that God is love. Mm -hmm. We receive our instructions from him and it rings true because it's our essence. It's how we were created. Okay. It's funny. It's sort of like... Um, you know, people that say, well, you know, I would die for you, like John, I would die for you, you know, because I love you, you know, but unless you're looking down at 45 with a guy ready to pull the trigger, mm -hmm. you know, that's when truth hits the pavement, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Amen. <clears throat> well, one of the things that we see in the word is, you know, and y'all know me, I like to break stuff down. So the first thing he says is, by this we what? We know love. Mm -hmm. And so that Greek word for know here is the word gnosko. And I'm wondering what is going on with this signal? Why is my signal dropping, it says. Hmm. So hold on, let me double check something. To make sure I don't have anything else working in the background. I'm going to do something real quick. Apologize just to make sure. Nope, we don't see anything working in the background. All right, Chris Alvarez says love means sacrifice. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chris. All right, so let's take a look at. Um, mm, okay, I had to do some stuff afterwards. Whoa, okay. Here we go. Uh, all these I apologize y'all I'm getting some uh, errors on my computer as I'm 
going through teaching, so I need to make sure that we have all this taken care of and minimize any uh, technical difficulty. Uh, so, as we're looking at this, one of the things we got to take a look at is this word no. And this word no, gnosko in the Greek means to learn, to understand, mm -hmm. to perceive. Okay. And so one of the things that we understand then as we're looking at this, he says, by this we understand love. By this we perceive love. Right. Love is known through action. Mm -hmm. Love is not something that's said. Mm -hmm. Love does. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to repeat that again. Love does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it reminds me of the old song by Janet Jackson. What have you done for me lately? Uh huh. <laughs> you say you love me, but what have you done for me lately? All right. Many people are asking that question of those that they are in relationship with and those that say that they love them. Mm -hmm. So anybody can say they love you, mm -hmm. but the evidence of that love is proven through their actions mm -hmm. with you, for you, mm -hmm. and towards you and others. Mm -hmm. So here's a question. How can we begin to evaluate the love that someone has for us? Okay. You raised your hand first. Oh. Well, um, I would just say to see if it lines up with the standards of, you know, what um, what the word tells us. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, there's a there's a bunch of examples. Um, one of them was right here in the in the book of First John. You know, if you have something that your brother needs, why would you tell him to go away and come back again if you have it right there by you? Amen. There's so many examples all throughout the all throughout the scriptures. Jesus also had the example of, you know, who, who's going to ask for bread and give them a stone, mm -hmm. you know. You know, if, if you really love somebody, wouldn't you just give them the bread, you know. Give good gifts, yeah. You know, I mean, you know. The, um, but I, I wanted to use the online example. Um, I've been checking out, you know, because I'm single, you know, I've been checking out a lot of, you know, people online, you know, trying to find somebody to, you know, be with. And it's incredible how many ladies are going to sit there and tell you, I love you on the first day that you talk to them. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, oh, yeah, it, it happens over and over again. It's like, you don't know what love is. I'm sorry. You know, I don't want nothing to do with you, you mm -hmm. know. Bam, right off the top. See ya. <laughs> Amen. That's real. <laughs> that is real, and it happens over and over. Everybody knows how to say I love you, you know. That's true. And, and thank you for that. And one of the things that we see is that also remember the same way that we have, that someone has love for us, we also should have love for them. Amen. So it goes the both way. How do we, if we ask the same question, how do we evaluate our love towards others? Mm -hmm. Then the answer is in our actions. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so as we take a look at this, the next part, he says, by this, we know love because what he laid down his life for others. So, and this word laid down is the Greek word to thame. And basically it just means to be horizontal. And what, what I want you to understand or to place horizontally in the horizontal position, orientation. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think about is that in our lives, we spend most of our time, watch this y'all, vertically, mm -hmm. walking around. Right? Mm -hmm. Right now I'm vertical. All right. I'm not I'm not horizontal, but when you are horizontal, mm -hmm. what happens? 
you end up what? When you are horizontal, you're laying down. Mm -hmm. You allow others, watch this, give an example. Allow others to walk over you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's a difference. And so if we understand, because this is what he did. He laid down mm -hmm. his life. Think about that. Mm -hmm. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, it, it reminds me of, you know, back in the day, those old movies, you know, where there was a puddle and, and the, the gentleman, you know, the, the couple are walking. And so the gentleman takes off his jacket and coat and puts it down over the puddle so she can walk over it. What I want us to understand and see is that's what Yeshua did for us. Except the coat wasn't something that he could put back on. Well, he did. It was his life. life. Right. But he picked it back up. Right, but understand what we're, what we're saying. Mm -hmm. He said, nobody takes it, but, life from me. but I what? I lay it down. I lay it down. Yeah. This is what he did. This is the example. Mm -hmm. This is the standard. Are, are, are y'all beginning to see this thing? Yes, so, as we're looking at this, watch this. He also didn't hide behind pride mm -hmm. and think he was too good to lay his life down. Because mm. he could have, right? Oh, yeah. The word tells us in Philippians chapter 2, and what's up to... Uh, uh, Ricky Whitaker and also my bro Dirk Smart. What's up? DJ Gospel New Flavor. <laughs> um, so watch this. Or I'm sorry, WGKP Sounds. Um, oh, Philippians 2, verse 5. Listen to this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it what? Robbery. Robbery. To be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, mm -hmm. taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Yeah. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has ex highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Are, are, are y'all understanding this thing? Yes, sir. So as we're seeing this, we're seeing that he didn't go behind this thing and act like he was too good for us. Imagine if he was too good for us. Imagine if he was like, you know what? I ain't got time for them. Not today. And, and, but we see he literally took off everything he had to come and serve us. Not only to serve us, it says, but made himself of no reputation. He wasn't worried about how many likes he had or how many followers. Whoa. He gave away his whole account to what? Coming in likeness of men, being and found in appearance of men, and humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. That is the standard. That's the rubric of love. John Cummings. Um, I just wanted to point out, you, you were given the example of what Christ did. You know, he, he wasn't proud. He didn't think of himself or raise his uh, moral standards so high, you know, that, you know, it's like, well, I'm too good for this, you know. And he could have, he could have just smited everybody that was, you know, after him at that time, you know, flat, you know, flailing his flesh off his bones and all that stuff, you know. But look at the devil. What would he do? You know, he he's total opposite. He w he was jealous of Jesus. He wanted what Jesus had. 
you know, um, he was selfish, you know, all about me, I don't care about you, you know, I mean, you, you see that in the world everywhere, you know, people that you talk to, people you don't know, people you talk to online is incredibly selfish, you know, I mean, it, it's just, you know, it shows the raw ignorance, if you will. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to keep that thought for a moment because as we continue on, my question is, how can we imitate the character of Christ? Mm. What can we do? Everything that is in our strength and possibilities to help out to guide, to build up, to, you know, everything that we can in our power to help our brothers and sisters, family, friends. And Jesus even went the extra mile because he laid down his life for the people that were bad, the people that were killing him, you yeah. know, I mean, you know, so, I mean, that shows us how much further we need to go. You know. Amen. Who else? How can we imitate the character of Christ? Do our best to show love as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, in any situation, you know the WWJD. What would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. But you can just um, <laughs> show Famous show love words. as much as we can because God is love. And when we're showing, you know, everybody that you know love, we're showing them who God is. Amen. So watch this. All right. So I want y'all to make sure for those who you know, take a note, you definitely want to make sure you pay careful attention to these next couple of steps. So I want to turn your attention to another passage of scripture. John chapter 13. OK, and welcome to my sis, Pastor Ruby Brown White. So watch this. John 13, we're going to begin in verse one. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garment took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said to him, What I'm doing you don't understand now, but you'll know after this. Mm -hmm. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Mm -hmm. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. All right. And so, and, but I want you to see and understand this thing. So the first thing, verse, in verse three, it says that Jesus, knowing that the father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God. Mm -hmm. See, I want you to understand that Yeshua understood and accepted his role. Mm -hmm. We must understand our role and assignment mm -hmm. as fathers and leaders in the kingdom. Ultimately, this ends in death. See, there's a, a saying online where, you know, or, or a saying that we have, and you might see it, you know, oh, sis understood the assignment. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus understood his role and his assignment. Mm -hmm. Yeshua knew he was going back to God. Now, as fathers, we play a critical role in our families and in the lives of others. We must make a series of decisions 
that ultimately end in us lifting others up at the expense of our own lives Let's go. or ourselves. Give you a practical example. If you're a husband, then and, and you have a car and your wife has a car, your wife should have the better vehicle. Mm-hmm. That's how it goes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and if you're a father and you're married and you have kids, mm-hmm. I need you to understand this. Listen to this. Your wives and children, pardon me, your wife and children must have before you want. I'm going to say that again because some of us need to learn that lesson. Your family must have before you get to want. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So this this is this is serious. This is some this requires some self analysis for the fathers. You know, and so watch this. Rose from supper. Look at verse four. The next thing that Jesus did, the next thing Yeshua did. So one, of course, he understood and and accepted his role. Number two, the next thing he did was he rose from supper. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. Now, he knew this was going to be his last meal. But what did he do? He pushed away his plate and he stood up. He might have wanted that second help in the greens. Giblets. Can I get can I get another biscuit? Can I get one to go? Some of, some of, you know, he may even want to take one to go. And enjoying his last meal to the fullest. After all, even criminals on death row they get an opportunity to do what? Have a last to have their last meal. Yes, sir. Amen? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And so as we're seeing that, and I apologize to y'all on Facebook, it seems like I don't know what's going on with the signal, but uh, y'all may have to catch it on YouTube. Uh, hopefully you can still hear me, but um, you may have to catch the YouTube version. Um, but watch this. So he pushed his plate away and he stood up. Mm-hmm. See, he could have said, I want more. <clears throat> he could have said, you know what? This is my last meal. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get all I got. <laughs> It'll be, I ain't even going to see this natural food again. So I'm going to enjoy this thing they call food. Mm-hmm. But even more than that, he understood the value of contentment and its role in his assignment. And so let let me refresh your memory to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Listen to this. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm -hmm. For we brought nothing into this world Mm -hmm. and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. For those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, Mm -hmm. and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Mm -hmm. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, Mm -hmm. for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. See, he understood the focus. My question for you is what's on your plate that you need to push away from you in order to help others? Something to think about, isn't it? What's on your plate? What are you doing with your time that instead of squandering it and wasting it and, and doing things that are non-productive, 
Mm. Mm -hmm. Instead of helping those around you, instead of building and working to build the kingdom and building others. And then here's another question. What are you doing to clear off your plate to have room to help and serve others? Thoughts, questions, comments? I went to, uh, well, I was born and raised in the uh, Seventh-day Adventist religion. And every quarterly we had, um, uh, what do you call that, when we uh, uh, have the, have the uh, grape juice and the communion. And the communion. But part of our communion that I don't see reciprocated in any other religion, and, I'm, and it really breaks my heart, is the foot washing. Because that was part of what Jesus asked us to remember and emulate. Well, hold, hold that thought. Because one of the things, we're going to talk about the foot washing concept and what it represents. Mm -hmm. And so... Because I, know what I, I, I because one of the things that we want to do, we don't want to imitate something mm -hmm. just because of what in the way in which somebody did it. Like you walk three way, three steps to the left, two steps forward, mm -hmm. then somebody else has to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. No, you got to get to your destination, right. and so in your own context. And so I, I'm I'm going to address that in a moment. Mm -hmm. So, but. The, but one of the questions I want to ask is at the point right now is what's on your plate that you need to push away? What's in the way of you helping and serving others? What, what, what's, what's some of the things y'all got on your plate? Talk to me. Uh, family. Um, family, okay. Uh, How so? Everybody have those. Uh, you always have that one person in your family that needs to lose help. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, but it's true. No, no, no Maddie, I, you didn't see what Maddie did. One next she was yeah. pointing to herself. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. Um, that um, finances, being able to make ends meet, work, just everything that you know, like. Daily tasks. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anyone else? What do you have on your plate that you need to clear off in order to help and serve others? What are you wasting your time on instead of helping others? Or what are you doing to clear off your plate? What are you doing to clear off your plate to help others? Anybody intentionally striving to clear off their plate? Or y'all just trying to get as much as you can? <laughs> I'm trying to um, make room specifically to help out with my grandmother. Amen. So that means revamping your schedule. Yeah, I got to work it into the schedule to be available. Amen. So now we about to get I'm about to get a little deep here, so make sure y'all, especially some of y'all may want to take some notes, certain demographic population. So first of all, for some of the brothers, y'all may have to even leave early before the game ends. Mm -hmm. Or even skip the game mm -hmm. to help someone else. Ain't that the truth. You see, we've created this consumeristic society and I love, love football and sports as much as the next person. But how many times have we said this? I'll get it after the game. <laughs> Never said that in my life. Never. <laughs> or after I finish playing this game. Yeah, I heard that. And so, watch this. So, ladies, watch this, y'all. Y'all not excused. Because you also can demonstrate the same characteristics. No. But also, you can look for the same characteristics in your husband or potential father. Mm -hmm. 
I remember a conversation with my father-in-law or then was my future father-in-law that we had when I was dating his daughter, my now wife, Precious. And he said to me, look, if you can't do better than what I'm doing for now, you can leave her here. Now, those were some very sharp words. Those were some very abrasive words. But those were words that were spoken from the heart and position of true love. And I, I want you to understand this because, see, you, you heard of my, my wife, and it was funny what she had posted on Facebook. I mean, it posted on this the response to the question. And here, <laughs> watch this. So I want to paint this picture for you. And one of the things he said after that, he was like, look, you won't be the first person that she fell in love with, and you won't be the last. <laughs> So, literally. And so, but watch this. I'm, I'm going to tell you, we need more of that. We need more of that today. Fathers, we need more of that. Daughters, we need more of that. Mothers, we need more of that. Listen, let me paint this picture for you. Here I was, this young insurance agent. And teacher, you know, I, I can't remember what I was doing at that time. If I was, if I was uh, an insurance agent at the time, if I was a teacher. In any event, I do remember that I was still living in an apartment with my roommate, okay. great brother of God. We, you know, great brothers and all of that. But let me paint this other picture. On the other hand, her father had worked extra jobs had worked hours. We're talking about 16, 8, 17, 18 hour shifts. Christ. Drove himself from what? From from Chesapeake to Surrey? Every day. And to work and sacrifice for his family. Now watch this instead of using the extra money for himself to get himself that new whip that he wanted that he saw everybody else had or do this and that. Mm -hmm. He used it to put his, both his daughters through Christian school while others thought he was crazy. Mm. And and so and what's up to my bro uh Dr. Kasai Moore. Also welcome to Sheena. So but watch this. In addition, he made sure that he attended every event that they've had. He didn't stop there, even with our grandchildren. He's there for everything that he possibly can be. Legacy. And so, and watch this, while he served others tirelessly, when I'm saying tirelessly, I'm talking about helping to prepare and deliver meals for people all in the kingdom through the kingdom of God. I'm going to tell you, I was a benefactor of seeing the result because I remember when me and my wife got married, then there was probably a, people, a few people I knew, but there was like four or five hundred people that came to our reception. And but. Most of them, a lot of them were people that her parents knew. Like probably Sister Peggy Stevens, <laughs> who's on here now. But what I want to see, and I didn't know these people at the time, but these people, they wanted an opportunity to sow in and pour in because of how her parents had blessed others. Because of the legacy and how many times... He woke up in the middle of the night. He went to the hospital and prayed for people, prayed with people, took meals to people when they had babies, when they were sick. This is what he did. Did, did odd jobs for them around the home. He, he, they need furniture moved. He, he, they're getting rid of stuff. He'll help and come to serve them. 
and at the same time, watch this, still cleaning up around his own house. That's right. Still washing dishes. Mm -hmm. Are, are y'all understanding this? Mm -hmm. Got to. I can say that in my lifetime, mm -hmm. I never have seen anyone serve others like Dwight Lanier. Praise God. This, this, this is real. Yeah. See, that's the standard. And see, I want you to understand that when he said what he said, he was setting the bar. So he said, you know what? If you can't do what I'm doing now mm -hmm. or do better, mm -hmm. leave her alone. Mm -hmm. Ladies, daughters, sisters, if your boyfriend, your bae, your boo, or friend can't do the same, leave him alone. That's all. Ring or not. Brother. If you are not willing to step up to the plate, leave her alone. And I'm not just talking yeah. about being here at, at, I'm not just talking about being here and giving money to the kids. I'm talking about being there for everything. And look, even Sister Peggy Stevens said, many times your father-in-law showed up at my bedside. Mm -hmm. See, she said he came all the way to Rocky Mount to bless her new home. Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Do y'all understand this, y'all? Yeah, yeah. Do y'all understand this? Yeah. See, what that did, because I'm going to tell you, I didn't have a father. Like that. I love my father, but I didn't see that full example to that level in my father. But God made sure that I saw it. He knew what I was seeking to be, so He gave me that in Dwight Lanier. Amen. And because of that, it caused me to rise to the challenge to be who God has called me to be and more. To be not even a father just to my own children, but also to surrogate father other children. To be there for other children and invite other people into our home. I need you to understand this. Some of y'all need to leave them alone. Yes, sir. Until he's ready to rise to the challenge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you ain't ready to step up, bro, give it up. Cause see, as we get to this next, this next thing, is, is this helping anybody? Amen. It's good. Yes. Is, is anybody learning anything here today? That's for sure. Yes. Strength is number. Amen. And so, number four, the next thing, he rose from supper. He performed a level change. He changed his posture and position and prepared himself to serve. Mm -hmm. See, the problem is you can't serve others while you're still sitting at the table being served. Some of you are sitting down in your seat to eat. When you should be standing up serving others. You should be discipling others. You should be building others. Helping them to grow. Mm. <laughs> Thoughts, questions, comments, responses. I'm, I'm going to just pause for a moment before I continue. When we think of, when we bring to mind, when we bring it to full focus... And we're able to cultivate what Christ did in his ministry and what his ministry was all about, to put it in its proper, its proper view, its proper sight. When we look at society today and even as Christians, the things that we aspire towards, the things we consider as great, 
and on the other side of the coin where you see so many people they want to be in this position of power that everybody wants fame everybody Come on. wants things that they that will lift them up to make them feel great to make them feel good everybody wants to be served and to be in that position of power mm -hmm. you feel like you want to be in that position of power because that's how you can get it is it a president is it a king but Christ was God Come on and he came to serve when you look at his ministry he didn't go around collecting a bunch of things from people and trying to get people to serve him and bow down. He was turning it away and he was serving. Come on. He said he came not to minister, not to be ministered to, but to minister. He was a servant. Come on. And it goes right back to washing the feet. If I've done this for you, this is what you ought to do. Come on. No greater love hath a man than this. That he lay down his life. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? See, this is the mark. As John was talking, one of the things I thought about is even our model of leadership that we have. And we have this pyramidic structure. And where you got the top. And everybody seeks to go and get to the top. But that wasn't his model. It was flipped. Mm -hmm. It was flipped. Mm -hmm. He was at the bottom so he could serve everyone else. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to do. Can, can I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you all a, a, short, a short mini story. And since I already talked about that, I might as well tell you a little bit more about the Holy Ghost setup and how things went down. But prior to my beginning to attend Calvary Revival Church of Norfolk, I was attending another church in Portsmouth, First Church of Deliverance, great church, loved it, was growing in God, teaching the word, was a minister there, and, you know, doing Bible studies, all sorts of things. But when God led me to go to Calvary, he placed upon my heart, he was like, look, there was something in my heart that said, I don't want you to seek a position. I didn't want to seek a position. I wasn't trying to do, I, I, I wasn't trying to be in, in the, the youth lead. I knew I was called to youth. I knew I was called to lead, but that's not where I tried to go. In fact, I said, you know what? The very first ministry, and it was funny, the very first ministry that I got in at that church, you know what it was? It was the maintenance ministry. And it was in that maintenance ministry when I was walking around, and, and you're talking about a brother who was high, who was anointed of God, who was preaching, who was teaching, who was ministering on the campus, and this and that. But I was in there walking around cleaning toilets, put the put the, the vacuum on my back, <laughs> went through the church vacuuming, you know, all of that, cleaning the urinals, men's and the ladies. You know, whatever we needed to do. Humility. But I'm going to tell you, you know what I didn't know? I didn't know about that beautiful woman right there who's my wife who I'm celebrating 21 years with of marriage. But I also didn't know that Dwight Lanier was the head of maintenance. I didn't, she wasn't nowhere in the picture. I didn't even know anything about her. But in that context, that was how I was first introduced to him. And he, when he was leading our maintenance team meetings and, and ministering to us and in, encouraging us. Yes, sir. Can, can y'all see this thing? Yes, sir. Can y'all see the way God just revolutionized? He, Holy Ghost set the whole thing up. To a T. But imagine if I was prideful and I was like, nah, I ain't trying to serve. Sure. I ain't trying to be no maintenance. Man, that's the devil. The devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. I've been preaching the word. I've been preaching since I was 16. No, I ain't going to go clean no toilets. That's something that somebody else can do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go and help and work with the youth. Right. They, I got something they can glean from. Mm. I need you to understand. Let's go. There is a purpose in the process. Yes, sir. 
there is a purpose in the process, even if you don't know it, what it is. Because see, what did he do? He rose from supper. He got up. Then he laid aside his garments. Watch this, y'all. He laid aside his garments. He got. He went to the cookout, and I know y'all. This is the summertime. You know, everybody has a, a a lot of things going on. Y'all got a lot of events. A lot of people graduating. They had all three graduations from Portsmouth Public Schools yesterday. And, and I know many of y'all went to some cookouts, and still will be going to some cookouts. But what do you usually do when you go to a cookout? You put on your your fit. Your, as y'all say, your outfit. Back in the day, in my day, it would have been a nice little short set. But, you know, now it ain't the short sets. It's whatever else they, you know, they, they got. But I want you to see. And he took off his favorite fit from the cookout. And instead, he changed his uniform. He laid aside his garment. He took off his cookout outfit, put on a towel, and girded himself. He put on his work clothes, y'all. Not And watch this. They weren't even just his work clothes. He put on the work clothes of the servant. Now, I'm going to tell you, I got good clothes. This right here I put on today, I would consider this to be part of my good clothes. Okay. I like it. I like the way it matches. If you can see, you can see I got the little sneakers that match ornate. it too. Yes, little sir. ornate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to Witherspoon. I think his name John. Coordinate. Coordinate. You got it. You got it. But I have good clothes and I got work clothes. Now, when I put on my work clothes, then I'm usually going to do what? Somebody tell me. Work. Okay, for my family, my kids, what do I usually do when I'm working on my workload? Working on a car. Working on a car. Uh, working outside. Working on the bathroom, fixing the bathroom. Glass. Working outside. Working outside. Right. Okay. Yard, the house. Or even helping a neighbor. No doubt. But I want you to say, watch this. Yeshua wasn't the type to ever say, oh, you ain't catch me dead in that outfit. <laughs> right. You wouldn't hear that come out of his mouth. Yeah. He wasn't too good for us. Now, I put on my work clothes because I know that it's about to get messy. Right. I accept it and I prepare, prepare for, it. for it. Yes, sir. You got it. We as believers have to, excuse me, learn to get messy by serving others in the kingdom and for the kingdom. Yeah. You need to put on your work clothes. You need to roll up your sleeves. I'm going to tell y'all something. As a matter of fact, honey, can you do me a big favor? Can you look in the drawer in the rear foyer and get my Burger King apron oh. as an object lesson? Huh? It's still there. Hope it's still there. Did y'all did y'all, did y'all y'all sneak me? Did y'all get, get rid of it when I wasn't looking? So... Well, I'm, I, I wrote, I still have my Burger King apron Great. from 1993. But uh, caveat, you know, uh, disclaimer, I hope I still have my Burger King apron from 1993. I hope somebody didn't get, get to it and toss it out. Yeah. But, and so, you know what? And I don't know why I still have it, but I do know that when I get on the grill, <laughs> you put it on? I put it on sometimes. Sure. That's for sure. Uh, well, that's why you still have it. Right. I can testify. But also, watch this. Yeah, you, you said, John, you can, yep. you've seen it. I think I got a picture. <laughs> and so, but you know what? I also guess it subconsciously, when I was thinking about it, I guess it subconsciously reminds me of my role as a perpetual servant mm -hmm. to put others' needs above my own. Because, see, when I worked in Burger King, thank you, honey. See, y'all see this? Yeah. This is from 1993, y'all. Oh, my God. Some of y'all weren't even born then. I wasn't born. But this, watch this. My first job in Virginia. 
And, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, welcome, good evening, welcome to Dirty Burger King drive through How may I help you? Would you like to try one of our value meals? Or whatever the case is, right? And so, but my heart was demonstrated in what I did. Exemplified. It was exemplified. May I serve you? That's who I was. I didn't have a problem. And so because of that, wherever I was, whatever job I was working, whether I was at Burger King, I was an employee of the month. Whether I was in telemarketing, I was employee of the month. Whether I was an insurance agent, I was an employee of the month. Whether I was a teacher, I was a teacher of the year. Because my heart is to serve. Yes, sir. In every capacity, I strive and pour myself out unto others. That's what we're called to do. Amen? Amen. That's what God has called us to do. Because see, one of the things is, mm, we got to put others' needs above our own. My question for you, where's your apron? What does your apron represent for you? Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Mm. And then we're, we're getting ready to close sometime soon. <laughs> mm. But, whoo, watch this. And the next part, verse 5. After that, he poured water into a basin. And began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. See, he level changed and served everyone. Whose feet are you washing? Okay. Now, let me help you to understand something. This, when they did this, when when Yeshua did this, what and the way it was back then, everybody had on the air Jesus sandals. If anything, right? They didn't have closed-toed shoes, if they had shoes at all. And so they would walk through the dusty roads. They would walk through whatever on the rocks, all of that, not to mention whatever the animals left. And so then what would happen, you know, they, they didn't have any socks or stockings. So when they visited someone... They had to, they, one of the things they had to do was they had to wash their feet every day, especially when entering a house, because you didn't want to bring that dirt from the outside into the inside. Yeah. Now, this role was usually performed, either you would do it yourself or somebody else would do it, or if you were rich enough, then the servants would do it. But not just the head servant. This was a job that was, a lowly job. So even a, a young, youthful servant would do it. Because it was the lowest tasks of even the servants. Wow. The least trained servant was the one that was assigned this job. See, now it's with this context that we understand that a true father a true parent, a true leader should be ready to wash the feet of their friends, mm. their family, and others. Not just because it's a tradition, not just because it's a custom. Mm. So my question for you is, what does foot washing look like in your environment or context? See, it may not look like washing feet. We may not need to have a feet washing service because that may not serve the needs of others. It was applicable then because that was a definite need of others. Now we wash our own feet. So I can, as an example, I can remember numerous times where my natural father my father, my dad, Ron Moore, 
who was a mechanic by trade, a certified mechanic. And I can remember many times that he'd work on friends' cars, especially his daughter's cars, because he had people that, you know, he, he looked out for and young ladies that he was close to. He was like a father figure. And so, like our, my good uh, sisters, uh, Andre and Tyra, you know, he would look out for them. He'd fix their cars and not charge them anything. That could have been an example in that context. Let's see. Sheena said, my father taught me discipline and love. My husband taught me freedom, true love, and prayer. Mm. Amen. Chris said, everybody needs to get over their potophobia and get to washing. <laughs> their fear of feet. Amen. So, but what did my father do? He served out of his gifting and his talents. Then the next thing he says in, in 1 John 3, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So I think it's kind of clear how we should repeat the example of Yeshua. Would y'all would y'all agree? Yes, sir. Yes. Then and we're gonna now we're about to close. Verse 17, 1 John 3, 17. And thank y'all for sticking with me on Father's Day. Yes, sir. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Woo! See, yeah. some of y'all thought y'all was off the hook. Because, <laughs> see, some of y'all was like, man, I'm glad. And then y'all like, ooh, he just went for the wallet. <laughs> He hit below the belt. But I need you to see something here. Goods isn't just money. No you know, in fact, do you know what the word here in the Greek is for goods? You probably know what it is. You know what it means anyway. Bios. B-I-O-S. What's that mean? What's that deal with? The body. The body. Life. And so he's saying, whoever has this world's life, this goods represents the life and anything you have pertaining to your livelihood or what aids as an asset in your life. Right. Translation, if you have the ability to add value mm -hmm. Look at that. to anyone's life through food, tangible resources, serving them, whatever, cooking them a meal, what have you. That's what we should do. Amen. Money, cash app, whatever. It doesn't sh say that you have to have a perfect life first. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so, if you see someone struggling and your heart is cold towards them, you, you may not necessarily even say anything bad towards them. Oh, can't you do better? No, it ain't even just that. But if you don't do anything physically oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. to help them, if you're distant and cold-hearted towards those in need, and, and, and when I'm talking about cold, you ain't even got to be, be like Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> Bye, humbug. No, we ain't even talking about you. You ain't even got to go to that level. But if you're distant and cold-hearted towards those in need, then the Bible tells us, then we need to really question if you really do love God. Yeah. In other words, this means, your this means your generosity towards others in need is directly reflective and indicative, indicative, excuse me, of your love for God. That's true. And I'm going to close out with this. James 2, 14 through 17. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you don't give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself 
If it does not have works, it's dead. And then we return back to 1 John and 3, finishing up in verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. Amen. And the title for today's message is Love Moves. It don't just sit there like a couch potato. <laughs> Amen. So, thoughts, questions, comments, responses. I look at that. The first thing that comes to my mind is um, when Peter, there was the beggar at the gate, and you know he was asking, you know, whatsoever he would of people that was passing by, and he was asking Peter, and Peter said, "Money I have not, but as much as I have, I give unto you." And like you were saying, it doesn't necessarily have to be money. Um, there's a lot of people that don't have, you know, like you were saying, uh, the strength to be able to do some things of their own. And, you know, we, we honor the wife as the weaker vessel in so many different ways. So in our society, it's like the more powerful you are, it's like the more it seems like things should be done for you. And that's completely wrong. Like, if you Amen. have the power, you should be using that power. Yes, the, the strong ought to not be the, the, the recipients of all of the strength. If you have the strength, you need to be used that to help those that have it not. Amen. The strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else? Thoughts, questions, comments, response? And that, res that goes for those online, on Facebook, as well as Zoom. Um, I, I just think it was a powerful message today. Um, a lot of it uh, resonated with me and some things that I need to work on and just have that conversation with God. And a lot of it has to do with love and how to love and uh, identifying the difference between what the world sees with love and what God sees with love and our relationship to that. And, so those are some things that I struggle with in my own, uh, some of my own personal relationships that I have with people. Amen. And uh, I'm hoping it, you know, I don't know what the next service is next, next week, but I don't know if it's gonna continue with that or if you could help me with some direction in that because I feel like I need it. Mm. Amen. I got you, bro. Absolutely. However we can help, you know we got you. What's going on with my laptop, my camera right now? Mm -hmm. Something just happened to my camera. All right, somebody else? Anybody else? Good message. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. I wanted to go back to the foot washing thing because um, one of the things that I really miss in a lot of churches around here is is um, that part of the service because it really humbles you, you know. I mean, we used to have this pan, uh, you know, with you know some water in it, you know, and the guys would go into one room, the girls would go into another, and we take the pan, put it down on the floor help the person take his shoes and socks off, you know, and, and actually, you know, wash their feet, you know, and feet is one of the most nastiest things on earth, at least it is to me, you know, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's the bottom of your body, you know, it's the part that hits the ground the most, you know, it, you know, shoes and socks, you know, Amen. you know, with everything. And <clears throat> it's very humbling, but it gives you that sense of serving others. Well, one of the things I want, I, I think you, because you, you may have missed the, because we, we kind of slept off. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we actually kind of covered uh, a, a bit of that. And it's not necessarily the, 
legalistic act of foot washing in, mm -hmm. in, in terms of you know what it meant then it's what it means to us now mm -hmm. and how we can wash each other's feet in our context mm -hmm. so you know if it means if it means going and helping and serving a neighbor or you know whatever the case is mm -hmm. however you're helping someone you know and, and again um, which means that we got to get up off our laurels to serve Amen. Amen. But I think to blow it off as, you know, I, I'm sorry, you, you, you're not doing that, but, um, you know, to pass it off as a legalistic thing, um, that'd be sort of like saying, well, you know, we got to act a certain way. You know, we as Christians have to act this way, you know, we need to be this way, we should, you know, not do these things, you know, isn't that all part of the legalistic point of view as well? Well, it's, it's not necessarily, basically what I'm saying is that that was done a certain, that was for a certain time, it's like, you know, we wash our own feet now. It, it's, it's, it's not necessarily, it, it doesn't even have the same effect. I mean, you walk around with socks all day. Mm -hmm. you, 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 it's, 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 not the, it's not the same. You know, if we were to translate that in today's culture, you know, it, that's, it, it's, it's not the legalistic act. It's the spirit of what it represented, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It's the, the symbolism. The foot washing in the Bible was symbolic of Jesus saying, I am going to be the lowest of all servants and wash your mm -hmm. feet. But for us, you know, I'm not saying you can't do a foot washing, mm -hmm. but it doesn't hold the same yeah, um, yeah. type of context or value in our society today. Because um, instead, you might say giving somebody a ride might be <laughs> yes. more of a sacrifice. Woo! Come on. Because, oh, Especially with today's gas better. prices. You better say that. You, got, you know, you got to drive to the place. You got to. Pay for the the so I think every, I'm um, I think every every culture has their thing, mm -hmm. and back then the thing was foot washing. Yeah. So that would be the lowliest thing you could do. But there might be something else that's really lowly that you don't want to do, like scrubbing toilets. I was thinking this. That yeah. might be something you might not want to do. Being a trash collector, you <coughs> might not want to do that. Well, like, like these are delicious. things that are in our society. These are the lowest of the lows. Whereas, you know, well, women get foot washed all the time. They go to pay for well, it. All the time. I just got mine done the That's the whole Me thing. Too. Like it's, now it's like glamour. Mmm, <laughs> that's real. I can get a voice that John kind of made as far as there's still a, a symbolic meaning to, in terms of servant leadership. So when you have leaders taking the time to wash their. I don't want to say subordinates, but they're people who are under them, those who they're leading. When they wash their feet, it's usually done in a symbolic way. It doesn't necessarily have to be legalistic because it's something they're just doing. But like you said, they're in the spirit of it. And right. as long as it's done in a, in a way that says the truth. I've seen John Maxwell wash Bishop according to Matthew. I've been at a wedding. Not wedding, where they wash each other's feet. I mean, it's symbolic right. to the meaning of what's going on and what it means to them. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yes, I, I agree, like, people just now washing each other's feet as something that's done, I don't want to say flippantly, but done in a sense of this is our way of showing our humility. I mean, then it becomes broken. and it's not as impactful as when there's a, a meaning for us or it's being symbolic to, to the overall theme of what's going on in the time. Right. No, no, and exact, and, and the, to, to close on this portion, because I don't want to, you know, take too much on this tangent, but one of the things that I, I strive to do is I strive to be a servant leader and not to pat myself on the back or any of that, but I think that I, I model and demonstrate that for for many people, you know, because I've helped many people, not just in terms of just the word, but I've helped in whatever task or assistance that I can do, whether it's fixing a sink, whether it's whatever, help, you know, look at a car, whatever the case is, I, you know, 
helping somebody with a resume. However, whatever capacity that I have within me, that's how I demonstrate servant leadership. And that's the key. The key is Jesus said, whoever's greatest amongst you shall be what? Your servant. Forget a service. If we get that concept there, if we get that concept there, not something that we just put on a calendar, but if we walk around with the heart and attitude of service like Yeshua did, that's the goal. That's what I see. You want to you want to ask me who's a foot washer? I'll say Dwight Lanier. That's a foot washer. He may not have ever washed anybody's calluses, picked any toe jam, but he has washed so many feet. And that's what we need to do. I don't want us to get caught up in, in the little, nah, forget, forget all that. This word is too powerful to be caught up on and, and miss the mark because of something over here. That's a that's 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 more of a distractive spirit. And what we want to do is we want to make sure we understand the root of what God is saying to us. This word is too powerful. Think about it. If, if, if the, think about the, the community. Think about the absence of, of fatherhood. Think about if, if they took hold of this, if the young men who are one day going to become fathers, if they took hold to this. Wore this around their neck like they do a, a, a necklace or a chain and put it in their heart. If the young ladies, the daughters, if they took hold of this and said that when, when somebody tried to say, hey, what's up? Can I get your number? And they took hold of this and brought this whole conversation back in their memory. That's what this is about. Amen. Amen. John Black. And we'll close out. I was going as far as I need to celebrate my anniversary. Yay. But, um, I'll make this quick. Um, I'm, uh, the, 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 greatest, the greatest message that he tries to set is a message of the conscience. Because he says, he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable unto God and approved of men. And he also says, let not then your good be evil spoken of. Whatsoever is not of faith is therefore sin. But he also says, like you said, faith without works is dead. So we, we strive to meet the mark. There's so many that, you know, when we, if we don't reach, as fathers, if we don't reach our best, we realize that God, in his position as being God, was judged to the point where they didn't consider him as being worthy of his humanity to, to even take his life mm. that far. So we want to be accepted for our best, but we also have to learn to accept Christ as he is, as being perfect. Mm -hmm. So it's all about, it's all about being able to, to know that you're giving your best to Christ because he accepts nothing less. And if you can do that, he accepts he, he, you will be accepted because he knows your heart. He knows you're trying your best. But if not, are we accepting him? Mm -hmm. It has to be reciprocated. Can Amen. Say, can I say one more thing before? Hold, hold, hold up. Nah, nah, actually, because right now, I, um, okay, okay. <laughs> I got to make sure we get out of here. So, but I want to say thank you to everybody. Hopefully, this was encouraging. Um, I didn't mean for it to go this long. It was supposed to go shorter. But uh, let's go ahead and get ready to pray. Because I want to model out some of these things that I've talked to you all about. Amen. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you so much you. for your word today. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for helping us to understand your word. To help us to have a clear interpretation and, and relevance in what your word means to us now. Help us to understand that 
the true mark of love that was demonstrated, the model, the, the rubric, was in how you gave of your son Yeshua and he laid down for us, laid down his life. And it reminds me even of an old saying that Yeshua said, I love you. He said, how much? He said, this much, and stretched out his arms. Even there, we saw the love demonstrated through action. Father, my prayer is that we won't get caught up on the minutia, but we'll focus on the heart of this message. And that's to really be not just recipients, but reciprocators of your love mm -hmm. to all those that are around us, to our families, to our neighbors, to our friends, to our children, that will demonstrate this love, will give of ourselves before we look to have for ourselves. Help us to change our, our model. Help us to understand what it means to serve and not to be served. And Father, one of the things that I, I pray is that we might all take on that spirit and it's funny when we look back, we think of that, I think of that old McDonald's commercial. And we see the young man Calvin, who grows up in the urban neighborhood and walking through and goes to McDonald's and works while everybody else is doing whatever, but he focuses and he helps and serves. Because that's what our focus should be on service. Mm -hmm. I pray that the words that are upon our lips, literally, will be, how can I help you? What can I do to help you? Do you have what you need? Father, that we might be able to see innovative ways to meet the needs of others during this time. To follow your example that you set for us. Father, we thank you. Thank you Lord. And even if it means giving money, God, if it means helping out on, on giving somebody some gas money, Father, let us do that. Let us not just take things for granted, but let us demonstrate appreciation. Let us help and be a blessing. And even ask and be observant, not so focused on ourselves, but let us look to the others. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we'll give you glory to God. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Well, thank you all so much um, for everything today. Um, thank you all for rocking with us on this wonderful Father's Day. Uh, just pray that you'll, even as we pray, that you'll go through and apply these lessons that we learned today. All right. So love y'all. Be blessed. Um, Peace out. Lord willing, we'll see some of y'all this Wednesday for morning prayer, 6 o'clock. And then also this Friday for those who are rolling with us to domination. All right. Love y'all. Be blessed. Love y'all. Happy Father's Day to everyone. Happy Father's Day. And happy Father's Day to the awesome uh, fathers out there. And those who aren't so awesome, happy Father's Day in the progress. <laughs> 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 Step your game up. Amen. Amen. Love y'all. Be blessed. <laughs> Bless y'all. All right.